Good morning, friends. Daniel Mitchell here at the Washington Civil Rights Association, or Sporting Systems, as many of you know me. Well, the Law and Justice Committee overbooked themselves today. Like Southwest Airlines, they left a whole lot of people stranded and not too happy. The permit to purchase was supposed to be heard today. It has been rescheduled for next week. Thank you to the Clark Rifles crew that drove down, uh, drove up to Olympia from uh, from Clark County. I uh, saw you there in the background and appreciate you guys making that effort to go up there. Um, thanks to all the panelists, uh, both pro and con, for wasting your entire morning waiting until five minutes before this hearing ended for the chair to actually tell us the truth that she uh, had lost control of her meeting and was not going to make it to uh, Senate Bill 5232. Uh, so I guess they've got another week or so before they strip away your civil rights. Um, anyways, that was a, a, a prime example of exceptionally poor meeting management and, and terrible communication. Uh, but I wanted to share with you today what I was prepared to testify for and hope this will energize some people to uh, to get into this game and follow along and participate in the next several hearings. Uh, this is this is getting spicy right now. I mean, we have a lot going on. So I'm going to read to you my two minute testimony, 350 words or so uh, about uh, about the permit to purchase process. So here we go. Good morning, Senators. Danielle Mitchell here representing Washington Civil Rights Association. No state may erroneously convert a secured liberty into privilege and issue a license and fee for that license. Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, United States Supreme Court, 1969. Today, I'm here representing Enum Clause Shanna Bloom, who is too traumatized by her experience to share the story here today. Quote, I am a survivor of domestic violence relationship where I was forced to draw my handgun on my abuser. Fortunately for me, I have owned guns most of my adult life, and I'm more concerned about the impact this bill will have on other domestic violence victims. If a person is unable to legally purchase a gun for self-protection, our Second Amendment rights have been unduly delayed and may lead to more innocent women losing their lives to their abusers. Imagine the woman who finally found the strength to call police. Her abuser is jailed, but has happened many times, is released the next day. This ex is exactly what happened to me three different times. Domestic violence victims do not have time to endure waiting periods and permitting requirements. Their blood will be on your hands when they are killed by their abusers because you prevented them from buying self-protection in a timely manner. This bill will not prevent crime. It will only delay honest peoples from protecting themselves. Now some parting words from myself. Yesterday, U.S. District Judge, Judge Bum in Coons versus Reynolds. Surely defendants had or should have had historical materials and analysis they relied on when it began its legislative response to Bruin. Certainly, defendants anticipated challenges to this legislation and should have been better prepared to defend the legislation's constitutionality. Addressing New Jersey State Senate President Nicholas Guttari directly, while the legislature may disagree with Bruin, it may not disobey it. Each of you took an oath of office to uphold the state and U.S. Constitution. When the courts correct you, do you continue to advance on biased political agenda alone rather than addressing the actual constitutionality of the legislation proposed? Thank you very much. We are sitting on a variable tide of decisions coming back in, in our favor right now. There's a whole nother wave of challenges being filed to gun control bills across the country. This week alone, New Jersey has put temporary restraining orders on three different laws, sensitive place, permitting, and they specifically rebuked the legislative responses to Bruin, as Judge Bum said to the state legislature, you want to get involved with your motion to intervene? That's great. But address the Constitution, not your balancing tests and public safety arguments and that's that stuff. 
The state of Washington has GVR'd the 1639 challenge back to the district court in Tacoma at the state's request because they knew they would lose in the appeals court. The magazine ban is awaiting the, post, uh, the first post uh, uh, Bruin judgment any day now. The New, New York cases, SCOTUS has told the appellate court to move faster or they'll intervene. Oregon, temporary restraining orders on the permitting and magazine bans already in place in state and federal courts. California, assault weapons ban, magazine bans, rosters, permitting requirements all going down. The judge that's already found this unconstitutional several times now has it back before him and he's already applied the Bruin standard in his original decisions. Illinois, the temporary restraining order on assault weapons ban in sensitive places. The attorney general petitioned to the state Supreme Court and the Supreme Court not only upheld the district court's decision, but they expanded it to not just cover the 800 original plaintiffs, but to cover all citizens of Illinois. Plainly said, Bruin is having a massive impact right now. And these folks know it, but they continue to waste our time in these hearings. They continue to promise state dollars to defend these unconstitutional laws in the courts. And furthermore, when they lose in the courts, they have to pay our legal fees. So we're paying for this twice. This is absolute lunacy that our state legislature will not address Bruin and its constitutional correction in these legislative processes, but they continue to go down this biased political agenda that proves no benefit to public safety at all, yet that is their argument. They've passed more laws in the last six years in the state of Washington restricting people's gun rights, the law-abiding people's gun rights, promising us that gun violence will go down. It hasn't. It's gotten worse. So why do we continue to make the same decisions, go down the same rabbit hole that loses every time, both in public safety and now in the courts? Hold these legislators responsible, ask them to actually address their oath of office that requires them to uphold the U.S. and the state constitution. They need to do it. They need to pull their heads out and take real action to make effective public safety concerns better. This isn't the way. They know it, but it's virtue signaling 101. They're going to lose their tails, but they want to go down and show they put up a good fight. No. Be responsible to the citizens of Washington. Spend our tax dollars wisely. Let's find real reform that will resolve the problem once and for all. Off my soapbox now. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day. Get in the game. Tag your gun shops. Tag your ranges. Tag your friends. Tag your family. Get them plugged into this stuff now. We need to speak loudly and together. Do not let them beat us with simple apathy. Thank you very much.